Hello everyone and welcome to this video on integrating Power BI with other applications. I am Tim Weinzappel and in this video I'm going to show how you can use Power Automate to automatically save data files that you're getting from your email. Let me give an example of one of the most common things I see with Power BI reports and your data sources especially when you are working with say Excel or CSV files and that is you get the files via email. So let me give an example. I've got a simple Power BI report showing sales by month and year, and you'll see the last one is April of 2023. And in my email, I just got one from uh, a colleague who is sending me the sales data for May of 2023. And what I would normally do then is take this Excel file and I'm going to save it to where I have all of my data sources. And in my case, I have a very simple SharePoint folder set up and you can see here um, where I am storing that. And I've already saved the file here to, um, to May of 2023. And I've went ahead and done that. Now, I did show in a previous video how you can consolidate um, all these files in a SharePoint folder or a OneDrive folder to make it very easy. So I won't cover that in this video. But the point is I have to go ahead and manually save the file from my Outlook over to my SharePoint location. And I do this say every month. Now, if you're doing this monthly or daily or quarterly or whatever, the point is you're having to manually go through those steps of doing that. It doesn't take long, but if you're out of the office or something, um, you know, it's, it would be great if you can automate it. And that's the great thing is, is by using Power Automate, I can actually do all of this and not even have to to be online, I, I can have it refresh my Power BI report. So I could literally wake up every morning uh, when the email comes in and it, it's done all the work for me. So let me show that. Let me give an example then of what I want to have happen by automating this entire process. So I've gone back to my email. What I've done is I've deleted that email where I get the sales file. And what I want is that when the email comes in, I wanna have it automatically saved that Excel file to my SharePoint site. You'll see I've deleted it here. Then I wanted to go ahead and add it and refresh my Power BI report so that when I go to open up my report, it's already been refreshed. And all of this has been done without me doing anything. So let me go back to my email. I'm going to go ahead and have this email sent to me. So now it should come into my inbox. There it is. Now what's happening is through Power Automate, the Excel file that was attached in there is going and being saved to my SharePoint site. The Power BI report is being refreshed and this email should actually go away. I've actually set it so that the email is deleted because I don't need it and there it goes. So there, I could have this done and this could happen in the morning, um, you know, so I don't even end up seeing it. I now go to my SharePoint site and there, if I refresh this, there is the file. It's been added automatically. And now when I go to my report, I may need to give this a second so that the refresh to go through. But if I go ahead and I refresh this page, you'll see that May is now there. So this can all be set up automatically through Power Automate. And you can do this and see how easy it is. So let's jump over to Power Automate and show just how simple it is to set this up. I moved over to Power Automate. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the flow that was set up. And you can see it only consists of just a few steps and we'll recreate this real quickly. So I have a step when the email comes in, that's what is my trigger. I then have a uh, apply to each, which saves the file to every SharePoint. Um, it saves every file to the SharePoint site. In my case, I'm using SharePoint. You could be using OneDrive. Uh, I refresh the Power BI data set. Then I delete the email. So let's go ahead and recreate this and just show how really simple it is to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start from a blank flow. I'm gonna skip it, we'll rename it up here. Uh, I'm gonna move over to the old designer. And okay, so for my trigger, now in my case, I am using Office 365. So um, when an email, I'm gonna just go ahead and search for it. This tends to be pretty easy. That is the, trigger I want. So I am using the Office 365 connector and there it is when a new email arrives. Now, one of the things that I want to do is uh, a real tip here is to um, set up the advanced options because in my case, 
what I don't want is this trigger to, uh, to kick off every time I get an email in. Without setting any parameters, it will trigger this flow for every email. And I don't want to have, have that happen. A real common one that I use is the subject filter. And I make sure that the email subject line is going to be unique enough so that it will um, know only to trigger those specific emails. This works great if you have, say, an automated uh, reporting application that sends out, um, you know, that an automated email where you can set the subject line. In my case, uh, the example that I had and it got deleted, so I got to go ahead and pull that up. And you'll see here the subject line is monthly sales file. Now, this is probably not a good one to use simply because it might come in through other emails. But for purposes of this, let's go ahead and use it. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that. And I'm going to give, again, subject line, monthly sales file. Um, right above it, you have include attachments. By default, it is no. You have to mark this as yes. And if you hover over this, what this will do is this will include, um, let me see if I can get it to show here. Uh, there, um, I need to find it here. What this will do is when you hover over this, including attachments, I think I have to actually, there it is, I have to show here. Should the response of the trigger include the attachments content? And the answer to that is yes. If you have this as no, this will not work. Um, you could set a couple other parameters here. You know, if it's coming from someone specifically um, or to someone or from someone, um, only with attachments, um, this is, it will only trigger if the uh, email has an attachment. Um, you can leave this as um, yes or no, this does not matter. Um, but what I normally do is use the subject filter and then make sure include attachments. So this will trigger when that happens. So we go ahead and hide that. Let's go ahead and create a new step. Now, in my case, I'm using SharePoint. If you're using OneDrive, you would use the OneDrive connector. And I'm gonna go ahead and do SharePoint. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a file. I go to create, uh, and I wanna create file. There is create item, that does not apply here. That applies to SharePoint lists. So in my case, I'm going to do create a file. Now, I am creating a new file. Now, in my case, I am adding a new file because my data is, um, being captured individual monthly files. Let's say you have one standard file that is just overwritten. It doesn't matter, this step will work as well. It'll just overwrite the file if it's the same file name. So I need to go ahead and choose my site address. It is this one here. And then I have to give it where it's going. Now in my case, um, I'm pointing it to the same location every time. So I'm gonna go ahead and find it. And in my case, it is located. Uh, here it is in um, so I'm choosing this um, name of the file now this is where you can name the file now there's different ways you could do this if you wanted to add dynamic content say you wanted to add the month you know the day that you're getting the file or whatever other ways to do that for our purposes we're going to keep it very simple in this example and I'm actually going to name it the way it's already named so I'm going to go ahead and do um, if I go here to attachments name now, one of the things you're gonna notice, the minute I choose that, it automatically wraps. You'll see my steps have changed from create a file. It's been wrapped in a apply to each uh, container. The reason this is happening is because your email could include multiple attachments. So what'll happen is this container now wraps that around so that it will apply whatever steps are in this container to each file, to each output from your attachments. So um, I'm just gonna go back to it. It's already saved everything there, um, and there it is. So I'm going to keep the file the same name. Now, I could have changed this. Let's say you, you have a standard file that you wanna overwrite. You could just certainly type in the name of the file. So if, let's say I had you know sales data, um, and you have to make sure you put in the extension. So if it was Excel or CSV, whatever the case may be. So you could certainly type it in. Um, but in my case, I'm just gonna use the name of the file that came in and that's attachments name and file content. There's only gonna be one option and that's attachments content. So that's uh, that step as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now, this right here, we'll go ahead and save the file to your SharePoint site. Let's go ahead and add in the steps to refresh my Power BI report because I want that to happen as well. I will search for the Power BI connector and 
very simple one. Instead of searching or scrolling down, I can search for refresh a data set. And there it is. It just asks for the, your, uh, your workspace and your data set. Pretty easy here. So this one is on my workspace. And let me go ahead and pick the data set. And it is this one right here. So that one's set. Now, one thing to be aware of, this is a quick tip, is your flow will, when you're, if you trigger your flow, it can be successful and it will look like it's, it'll trigger a refresh. But if your refresh on your Power BI server has an error and something kicks out there, it will not, uh, the flow will not tell you. The flow will be successful because all it is doing is triggering a refresh. What this really should say is trigger a refresh because that's done its job and it goes away. So if the refresh does not succeed, if it fails on the Power BI side, that is not going to be readily apparent in through your Power Automate flow. So just be aware of that. Um, last step I want to do is I want to delete the email. So again, I'm going to go back to my email and I am using Office 365. So I need to find it. There it is, Office 365 Outlook. And again, I have a bunch of emails and there is the delete email. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And it needs to know which message to delete. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going back again. I want this step, my original uh, act or trigger when an email arrives and I'm gonna go down here and there is a message ID. That's all I need. I can leave this blank and I save that. So that is all the steps you need to do to go ahead and automate this entire process. So that is how easy it is to automate that process of saving those data files that you might be getting through email. So I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please make sure to subscribe. I will be doing more videos on how you can integrate Power BI with other applications. And thank you for watching.